أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعض فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تتخذوا آباءكم وإخوانكم أولياء إن استحبوا الكفر على الإيمان ومن يتولهم منكم فأولئك هم الظالمون قل إن كان آباؤكم وأبناؤكم وإخوانكم وأزواجكم وعشيرتكم وأموال اقترفتموها وتجارة تخشون كسادها ومساتن ترضونها أحب إليكم من الله ورسوله وجهاد في سبيله فتربصوا حتى يأتي الله بأمره والله لا يهدي القوم الفاسقين صدق الله العظيم قل Say to them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Muslims, if your fathers and your sons and your brothers and your spouses, wives for the husbands, husbands for the wives, and your relatives, washiratukum, five relations, closest, most dearest, dear. Fathers, sons, brothers, spouses, and now general relations. Three forms of wealth. Vamvalu niktaraftamuha and the riches that you have acquired and gathered. Vatiyaratun tashauna kasadaha and the businesses or the professions about whom you remain fearful of any recessions and your dwellings which you very much like they are built very good houses villas you have decorated them furnished them you love them now uh, if these eight things, ahabba ilaykum, are more dear to you than min Allahi, from Allah, wa rasoolihi, and his messenger, wa jihadin fi sabilihi, and making jihad, striving for the cause of Allah, in the path of Allah, to spread the word of Allah, to establish the deen of Allah. Fatarabbasu, then you go and wait. حَتَّى يَعْتِي اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ Till Allah brings forth His decision. وَاللَّهُ لَا يَحْدِ الْقَوْمُ الْفَاسِقِينَ Allah is not going to guide such rebellious people. One of the most profound ayat revealed in that special context. People who were not liking, you know, to invade Makkah. But you know this is a very general ayah. It asks every one of us to have a soul searching, peeping into the depths of our hearts. And let there be a balance, an imaginary, imaginary balance. And you put on one side of the balance Love for eight things, five relations, three forms of riches or belongings or property. <coughs> On the other side of the balance you put three loves, the love for Allah, the love for His Messenger, 
and the most crucial love for jihad you may say i love allah from the depth of my heart you may think and you may claim that you love muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam what's the proof the proof is but jihad in feasible now see which side of the balance goes down if these eight things are heavier than those three go away you are rejected dejected rejected if these three are heavier then black tidings good news to you this is for each one of us most crucial allama iqbal in a very beautiful you know couplet he has grouped these things in one sentence ye maal o daulat e duniya ye rishta o paiwand gotaan e wahm o guma la ilaha illallah maal o daulat e duniya three things rishta o paiwand five fathers sons brothers spouses relatives rishta o paiwand maalat o daulat e duniya amwaab o nikl اموال ان طرف تو موها و تجارت ان تخشون کا سادا و مساکن و تربون ہا اف دی لو فار دیس ایٹ از مور دین دی لو فار اللہ اینڈ ہز میسنجر اینڈ دی پریکٹیکل سائیڈ اف اٹ جہاد ان دی وے اف اللہ فتربصو حتا یافی اللہ بی امری اللہ لا یہدی القوم الفاسق ناو وتھ دس آیا اینڈز دیٹ سیکشن اف دی سورہ these 18 ayat which were revealed before the victory of makka to prepare muslims and to remove from their minds the doubts about it the hesitation regarding this now again ayat which were revealed in zi qada of 9 along with the first six now here we start you can join with them the first six the ultimatum the ayat of the ultimatum laqad nasarakum allah fi mawatin kaseeratin wa yawm hulain o muslims don't fear that such a big ultimatum what come what has come what has happened to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they were munafiqeen all right they would have thought you know again they have gone crazy such a big ultimatum to all the tribes of the arabian peninsula what a big step all the tribes i have i have counted three all the tribes with whom there was no treaty they will come first the ultimatum to them was only for 40 days faizan sarakha la shurum faqtul mushrikin ayat wa yatu then come those with whom there was a treaty but without any specified period of time four months those who are a treaty with a fixed time period you complete the time but you know no tribe of the Arab, arabian peninsula left over challenging all of them so there must have been some fears in the minds of some people even the sincere people even the mu'minin So Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala is reassuring don't worry laqad nasarakum Allah fi mawatina kaseera Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala has been help you helping you in many battlefields by yawm hunain and also on the day of hunain now this hunain was after the victory of bakka it proves that these ayat you know they are revealed after hunain is ajabatkum kasratukum when your great number elated you they were very proud you were very proud we are 12000 today there was a time when we were only 313 and we were not defeated now we are 12000 the 10000 who had gone to makka and 2000 more from the people who converted to islam after the 
victory of Makkah or they were still kuffar, but because now they were under Muslims, they volunteered to go with Muslims to fight for them. So the total number was 12,000, so big number. So they thought now there's no, no danger. Nothing could save you. And the land, despite its vastness, became very narrow for you. Summa and then you turn your backs, running away from the battlefield. This happened at Hunayn. Some people say only 30 Sahaba remained with the Prophet ﷺ. But you know the more dependable traditions go to about 300. But only 300 out of 12,000. It was a big, you know, flight from the field. Because when they entered a, a valley, on both sides there were the mountain range, and on the tops there were the archers sitting. And the volleys, you know, arrows came in volleys. Sudden, there was a panic. People fled. Summa under Allah Sakinatahu ala Rasulay. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down calm on his messenger. This is the day when the bravery of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became apparent. And you know, all were running away, he descended from his camel or horse, whatever it was, I don't know. He took the alam in his own hand, the standard in his own, and then he said, Rats, Anan Nabi Yola Kazim, Anabnu Abdil Muttalib. I am Prophet of Allah, there's no doubt about it. Whether these 12,000 stand here and protect me and support me, or they are all free, I am the Rasul of Allah. Anan Nabi Yola Kazim, and I am the son of Abdul Muttalib, is here standing in this field. And then he called, Ilayya ya ma'ashar al-Muslimin, Ilayya ya ashab al-Badr, Ilayya ya ashab al-Shajra. Where are you running? Oh, those, those people who were with me at Badr. Oh, those people who were there at the time of the Bayat al-Rizwan. Ashab al-Shajra, Shajra. Then people returned. It was actually a reflex action. A sudden, you know, volleys of arrows coming. So this was... A very sort of, you know, a reflex section. And then people came round. Summa anzal Allah sakhidatahu ala rasulihi wa ala al-mu'minina wa anzal ajnudan lak tarawha. And he sent down armies whom you couldn't see. The armies of the angels. Wa azzab al-lazina kafaru. And he punished and chastised those who had unbelieved. Wa zalika jazaul kafirin. And this is. The reward of the, of those who deny or reject the true faith. Summa yatubu Allahu min ba'di ala zalika man yasha. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns with his mercy to whomsoever he likes. That is, he gives him the decision he makes to repent. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts his repentance. ثم يتوب الله من بعد ذلك على من يشاء والله غفور رحيم الله is forgiving and merciful. يا أيها الذين آمنوا إنما المشركون نجس فلا يقرب المسجد الحرام. This was also one of the proclamations which were made by حضرة علي رضي الله تعالى عنه in Mina and Arafa on that that Hajj that now from this year on. No mushrik will be able to come here and, and do the pilgrimage. Ya ayu ladhin amanu inna mal mushrikun ala jasun. Oh, you believe, these mushriks who associate equals to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are filthy. Fala yaqrabu al-masjid al-harama ba'da aadihim haza. Now let them, don't let them come near the sacred mosque after this year. Wa in khiftum ayalatan. 
And if you are fearful of poverty, because these pilgrims come, they present something to Kaaba, and they, you know, distribute charity to the people over here. Now, if they are barred, you know, this they shall become poor. Fasafa yunikum Allahu min fazlihi. Very soon Allah will make, will make you rich, rich, will enrich you from His bounty. Insha, if he if he so likes. In Allah alimun hakim, Allah is all knowing, all wise. Qatilul ladina la yuminuna. Now this is the verdict about the rest of the humanity. Take away the mushrikeen of the Arabian Peninsula only of the time of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. About them, there was no third alternative, either embrace Islam or you will be killed. The third was that you flee away from here. Leave the land. But for the rest, now here only the Jews and the Christians are mentioned, but this is actually for the whole of the humanity. قَاتَلُوا الَّذِينَ لَا يُمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَلَا بِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَلَا يُحَرِّمُونَ مَا حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ وَنَسُولُهُ وَلَا يَدِينُونَ دِينَ الْحَقِّ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ حَتَّى يُعْتُوا الْجِزْيَةَ عَنْ يَدِمْ وَهُمْ سَاغِرُونَ Fight against those, those of the people whom the books, book was given before you. But they don't actually believe in Allah. All they do profess to do it. They don't have actual belief and faith in the last day. وَلَا يُحَرِّمُونَ مَا حَرَّمَ اللَّهِ They are not accepting as forbidden what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared as forbidden. وَرَسُولُهُ And not only Allah but also His Messenger. وَلَا يَدِينُونَ دِينَ الْحَقِّ And they are not obeying the deen of haq And Muhammad is sent to make the deen of Allah supreme. They are not ready to accept the supremacy of the deen of Allah. So you have to fight them. Hatta yotul jizyata wahum saagirun. Hatta yotul jizyata yadim wahum saagirun. Until they pay the tribute, the jizya, with their own hands, that is, with willing submission, and they become subdued. They accept the supremacy of Islamic State, the supremacy of Islamic law, and then, you know, under that, they are allowed to live as Christians or Jews. And for that matter, as Hindus, as Buddhists, or so on, whatsoever they are, they can live, if they accept the supremacy of the Islamic State. They will not be forced to accept Islam. Not that you will be killed if you don't accept Islam. This caution, you know, in religion, like Rahafid Deen, no, or on personal basis, except those people to whom Muhammad was sent directly, his birthday, khassa, that are the exception. But keeping them aside for the whole of humanity, no compulsion, no coercion, no individual would be forced to accept Islam. But the system, the political, socio-economic system, it will be shattered. If you have the force, the system will belong to Allah. But when the deen is supreme, under this deen, supremacy of Allah's deen, you can remain as Christians, as Jews, as Hindus, as Buddhists. You will get, you know, the guarantee from Islamic State of the safety of your lives, your property, your honor. You will be allowed to worship anything in any way you like. You will have your full guarantee of the personal law, marriages, etc., as you like. Law of inheritance, as you like. Your places of worship will also be protected, like mosques, rather more than the mosques. All these things will be guaranteed to you, and a tax will be taken from you. But you have to accept the supremacy of the Islamic State. That is crucial. Because, you know, in a hadith which I have referred many a times in my lectures on Khilafah, 
There is the hadith from Mirdad ibn al-Aswad radiyallahu ta'ala an, included in the musnad of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahimahullah. And according to this hadith, the Prophet said, لا يبقى على ظهر الأرض بيت وبر ولا مدر إلا أدخله الله كلمة الإسلام بعز عزيز وذل ذليل إما يعزهم الله فيجعلهم من أهلها أو يزلهم فيدينون لها. The Prophet said, there will not remain even a single house made of bricks and clay. Or nor for that matter any tent of you know made of blankets from the hair of camel, in which Allah will not make the kalima of Islam enter. Global domination of Islam is is to come before the end of this world. No house, no tent on the whole surface of the earth. The settled civilization as well as the nomad, nomadic civilization, all covered. La yaqa ala zahri al-arde, bayta wa barim wa la badarim la yafkhalahu allahu kalimata al-islam. But this kalima of Islam will enter in the house or the tent in either of the two ways. There is the azizin wa zulli zalilin. Honoring the honorable one, if the owner of the house and the tent accepts Islam, he is honored, Islam enters. In his house or tent, honoring him also. وَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ وَلِرَسُولِهِ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَكِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Number two, وَزُلِّ ذَلِيلٍ The weak should have to subdue, accept the supremacy. What does it mean? His house or tent is also governed by the law of the land. Islam has entered in his house also. But he remains, you know, a kafir. He is deprived of the honor of Islam. And then this prophet explained. What does it mean? Is there a reason? Imma yu'izduhum. Allah will give them honor. Wa yaj'aluhum min ahliha. And he will make them the people of that kalimah. They will be saying, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Or they will be subdued. أَوْ يُزِلُّهُمْ فَيَدِينُونَ اللَّهَا يَدِينُونَ اللَّهَا The same term which is used here, يَدِينُونَ اللَّهَا They will have to be subordinates to the deen of Allah. So this is the ayah. قَاتِلُوا الَّذِينَ لَا يُمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَلَا بِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَلَا يُحَرِّبُونَ مَا حَرَّبَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَلَا يَدِينُونَ دِينَ الْأَصْمِ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُ now a few things about these two groups, people of the book. وَقَادَتِ الْيَهُودُ عُزَيْرُ لِبْنُ اللَّهِ So said the Jews that Uzair, Ezra, is son of Allah. وَقَادَتِ النَّسَارَ الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ اللَّهِ And the Christian said, Masih, Jesus, he is the son of Allah. ذَلِكَ قَالْهُمْ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ This is their saying, the words that they are uttering with their mouths. These words have no meaning, no real basis. يُزَاهِهُونَ قَوْلَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا يُزَاهِهُونَ قَوْلَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ قَبْلِ They are imitating the saying of those who were before them from amongst the kuffar. I told you. But you know, let me mention here. Trinity among Christianity came from Egypt. The old ancient Egyptian Trinity was God the Father. Horus as son of God, Isis as the God-mother. So the Christians imitated them. God the Father, Jesus the son of God, and Mary the God-mother. That was the real trinity. They changed it later on. Excluded Mary, Salamun Aleha, and included the ghost, the Holy Ghost. But the original trinity was the same. And what happened to the Jews? When they remained in captivity in Iraq, for around about 100 years, captivity, Nebuchadnezzar, he invaded Jerusalem, and you know he killed about 600,000. 
And another 600,000, he took captives and took them to Babylonia. During that time in Iraq, the religion of Mithraism, that was popular. And here again, you know, the concept of son of God is present in Mithraism. So imitated, they imitated Mithraism. They got this, you know, infection from the Iraqi people during their time of captivity. The Christians took it from the Egyptians. They are just imitating the, the, the creed of those who were there from amongst the Kuffar. And I told you the same thing was done by Ismailis in India. When they started preaching in India, Ismailis, they told the Hindus, well, you believe in nine incarnations of God. Just add a tenth one. Ali is the tenth incarnation. It's very easy. One believes in nine. What's the difficulty in, in, in believing in the tenth? Dasham Avatar. Dasham Avatar. He is the tenth incarnation. And just as Paul had abrogated the law, because it was difficult to say prayer, to pay the cow, oh, it's a hard task. No, no, no. Sharia is not for you. The same thing that Paul did. Abrogated Sharia. And that is why, you know, Christianity then spread like anything. You only change your creed or you become a Christian. You only believe in Jesus and all your sins, they are condoned. So it's the, it's the best bargain. Not to do anything. In the same way, the Ismailis, they abrogated Sharia. There is no Sharia for the Ismailis over there. Not for all. <coughs> the Ismailis who, who dwell in the northern regions of Pakistan, <coughs> they have Sharia. They, have the, they are the original Ismailis who came from Iran very long ago. And Multan was one of the biggest centers of them. And Mahmud Ghaznavi invaded Multan many times only to finish these, you know, Bhatanis, who had a very strong hold in Multan. And then they fled to the mountainous regions, and they took refuge over there. That is why they are found in Chitra, they are found in Gilgit, they are found in Hunza. These, you know, areas were not easily approachable on these days. They went there, and they took refuge over there. But these people have Sharia with them, they have mosques. Not these people who were converted in Gujarat area and Bombay area and this area, you know. They were converted, they were given the, the Rishwa, you know, the bribery. That's, for you there is no Sharia. You come and believe. And you believe in only that Ali is the tenth incarnation of God. You become an Ismaili, a Muslim, Ismaili, Muslim. So that is the example among the, among the so-called Muslims. They have taken their rabbis and their monks as gods besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, Masih ibn Maryam, and they have taken Masih to be a god. They were not ordained, but to worship only one ilah. La ilaha illahu. There is no God except Him. Subhanahu amma yushrikun. And He is glorified from all that they are associating with Him. Now what does it mean? Ittakhadu ahbarahum wa rubanahum. Arbabam min dunillah. A doubt might have come to your minds. They don't worship them. And the same doubt was pre presented by Adi ibn Hatim radhi Allahu ta'ala an. The son of the famous, you know, philanthropist, Hatim, Hatim Tai. His son was a Christian, Adi. When he embraced Islam, once he said to the Prophet, I couldn't understand. Quran says, we, I was a Christian, and we never took them as our God. We never worshipped them. Neither the rabbis nor the monks. The Prophet said, 
didn't you accept them as the authority in law? Whatever they said is halal, you accepted halal. Whatever they said haram, you accepted haram. Oh, yes, this we were doing. This is actually the divine right that you have given them. Making law is the divine right. Tahleel o tahreem. Declaring to something to be permissible and something to be forbidden. This is divine prerogative. If you have assigned to somebody else, you have made him God. If you have taken it to upon your own self, the popular sovereignty, we can decide. You are claiming to be God. Because this is the exclusive right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So must understand this ayah. اِتَّخَذُوا أَحْبَارَهُمْ وَرُحْبَانَهُمْ أَرْبَابَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ وَالْمَسِيَ بْنَ مَرْيَمْ وَمَا عُمِرُوا إِلَّا لَيَعْبُدُوا إِلَاهَمْ وَاحِدًا لَا إِلَاهِ إِلَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ عَمَّا يُشْرِكُونَ يُرِيدُنَا يُتْفِعُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَائِهِمْ وَيَعْبَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا by blowing with their mouths. Vayab Allah. Allah, it is not acceptable to Allah. Allah is not ready to accept, accept. Illa yuti manurahu. Accept that He has to make His light complete. Walau karihal kafirun. Although the unbelievers might dislike it. Despite their dislike, Allah has to make the light of guidance complete. اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا. This is the decision. Muhammad is sent, صلى الله عليه وسلم. The advent of Muhammad, صلى الله عليه وسلم, is with this divine decision. Now, to whom this ayah refers? Number one, the Christians and the Jews. Here the mushrikeen are not mentioned. The context is, مِنَ الَّذِينَ هُتُ الْكِتَابِ اتَّخَذُوا أَحْبَارَهُمْ وَرُوبَانَهُمْ وَرْبَابَهُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ So you have to explain with reference to the context. And this is the situation which has reached its climax now today. I was reading some leaflet that some sanctions are coming very soon on Sudan also. Encirclement of Iran that is now as fundamental of the foreign policy of the United States of America as was the containment of Russia for so long a period. Pakistan is already in their pocket now. What is happening? وَاللَّهُ مُتِمُّ نُورِهِ وَلَوْ قَرِهَ الْقَاتِرُ Trials and tribulations will come to the Muslims, especially the Middle East. Armageddon is at hand. Al-Malhamatul Uzma is going to come very soon. Biggest persecution is going to the Arabs and they deserve it. Because they were given the fazilah. They have the book in their own language. So just like the special case of the pagan Arabs of the peninsula as compared to the rest of the world, the same connection is there. And this is going to come very soon, you know. But after that, there are good tidings of the Prophet ﷺ. Tables will be turned. But this is, you know, the basic thing. يُرِيدُونَ لَيُتْفِعُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِمْ يُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يُتْفِعُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِمْ You know, this ayah is repeated in Surah Al-Saf. يُرِيدُونَ لَيُتْفِعُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِمْ وَاللَّهُ مُتِمُّ نُورِهِ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْكَافِرُونَ Here, only two words are different. يُرِيدُونَ أَنْ 
which is the main axis of the whole of the Quran according to Shah Wariullah Dehlavi. Rahimahullah. Umud of Quran. Huwallazhi yarsala rasoolahu bilhuda wa deeni al-haqq li yuzhirahu ala al-deeni kullihi wa law kariha al-mushrikoon. This is the key to the understanding of the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What was his mission? He was not a preacher at all. To bring about that total revolution and make the deen of Allah supreme, he was sent for this definite purpose. And these words are repeated in the Quran thrice. هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُسِرَ فَعَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ Once here, it's ayah number 33 of Surah Al-Tawbah. Ayah number 9 of Surah Al-Saf, the same, exactly the same. هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُسِرَ فَعَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ In the end of Surah Al-Fatr, the major part is the same. هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُسِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ Last but one ayah of Surah Al-Fatr. But the end is وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا Instead of وَلَوْ كَرِحَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ So the same words appear in thrice in the Quran. And Shah Wariullah says, and I absolutely agree with him. This is the main theme of the Quran. Allah has sent His Messenger وسلم, with two things, the book and number two, Al-Huda, the book, and number two, the al haq the just politico-socio-economic system, the just social order, the true system of life. And what for He has sent Muhammad? لَيُسْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ so that he makes this deen of Allah supreme. The ayah which we read last night, قَاتِلُوا حَتَّى لَا تَكُونَ فِتْنَةٌ وَيَكُونَ الدِّينُ كُلُّهُ لِلَّهِ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ Although the mushrikun, they will resent it, they will not like it. Well, it's divine decree, it will happen. It happened once, at the hands of Muhammad in the Arabian Peninsula, then extended to east and west and north, to the Oxus River in the east, to the Atlantic Ocean in the west, to the Caucasian Mountains in the north. But then, you know, there was, they started a downfall. But this will happen again. There is no doubt it will happen. Maybe after the punishments come to us. <coughs> and the biggest punishment is going to come, as I told you, to the Arabs. Next stand we, the Pakistanis. Crores of us and 20 crores of the Arabs. 30 crores go to make one-fourth of the total Ummah. And why we? Because we establish a country in the name of Islam. So we deserve, and we have gone back on our words. Collectively, the whole Pakistani nation is culprit. Now, whosoever is more responsible, who is less responsible, it's a different story. But the nation is one. Nobody can say that I don't have any responsibility. فَاتَّقُوا فِتْنَةً لَا تُصِيبَنَّ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْكُمْ خَاصَّةً We read this ayah last night. Anyhow, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنَّا كَسِيرًا مِنَ الْأَحْبَارِ وَالرُّحْبَانِ لَا يَأْكُلُونَ أَمْوَالَ النَّاسِ بِالْبَاطِلِ وَيَسُدُّونَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Another criticism of these people of the book. And please, before reading the ayah, listen from me the hadith. لَيَاتِيَنَّ عَلَى أُمَّتِي مَا تَعَلَى بَنِ إِسْرَائِيلَ حَزْمَ النَّعَ لِمِ النَّعَلْ لَتَتَّبِعُنَّ سُبَلًا سُنَنَا مَنْ قَبْلَكَمْ You will follow in the footsteps of the former Ummah. The same thing will come to you. They have made their, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنَّا كَسِيرًا مِنَ الْأَحْبَارِ وَالرَّحْبَانِ لَيَاكُلُونَ أَمْوَالَ النَّاسِ بِالْبَاطِلِ Many among these rabbis and monks, 
they are eating and devouring the riches and money and wealth of the people with false means. They have made deen a profession. And when deen becomes profession, it's the worst profession of all. They stop people from the path of Allah. They don't let go towards the right dawah. No, no, no. Who is he? He is not an alim. He is not a certificate, certified alim. But what said of Muhammad? He is an illiterate person. Whom he? The same is to be said today. Who is he? We are the authority in Deen. Come to us. Don't go. Yes, do not answer And let me quote here another hadith which sends, you know, shivering. Yushik wa in yati ala nasa zamanun. لا يبقى من الإسلام إلا اسمه ولا يبقى من القرآن إلا رسمه I fear that a time will come when there will nothing be left from Islam except its name and there will be nothing left from Quran except the script مساجدهم عامرة their mosques will be very grand crowded وَهِيَ خَرَابُ مِنَ الْهُدَىٰ Absolutely devoid of guidance. Rituals, mere rituals. وَعُلَمَاهُمْ شَرُّ النَّاسِ تَحْتَ عَدِيمِ السَّمَاءِ And their ulama will be the worst people under the canopy of the sky. مِنْ عِنْدِهِمْ تَخْرُدُ الْفِتْنَةُ وَفِيهِمْ تَعُودُ From near him will come out fitna and it will return to them. Starting fitnas will be the only hobby with them. This is the ayah, this is the hadith. The same condition. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنَّا كَسِرَ مِنَ الْأَحْبَارِ وَالْرُحْبَانِ لَا يَاكُلُونَ عَبَالَ النَّاسِ بِالْبَاطِلِ These things have come to your country also. Now Tavis is being sold, I told, for five dollars, ten dollars in Chicago. It's going on now. Everything has come here. All the religious professions, they have fully overtaken your society also. For some time, you know, these things were not here. But now, full, full-fledged clergy, full-fledged, you know, all these institutions. يَا أَيُّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنَّ كَسِيرًا مِنَ الْأَحْبَارِ وَالْرُحُبَانِ لَا يَأْكُلُونَ أَمْوَالَ النَّاسِ بِالْبَاطِنِ وَيَسُدُّونَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ يَقْنِزُونَ الزَّهَبَ وَالْفِزَّةَ وَلَا يُنْفِقُونَهَا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَبَشِّرُهُمْ بِعَذَابِ الْأَلِيمِ And those so to them, O Messenger of Allah, give them the glad tidings of painful torment. This ayah, it was, so to say, misunderstood by Hazrat Abu Zar, Radhi Allah He declared keeping any coin of gold or silver is hard. But the general body of the Muslims and the scholars, they think that if you know, if you have got some savings, you can have some gold, some ornaments of gold and silver and gold. But if you pay the zakah, it is not kans. Yaknezuna. These words are not applicable to it. But what's the basis of saying this? 
It can be said, yes. Inferring generally from the principles and teachings of Quran and the legal structure of Islam, it is correct, I agree with them. But the more important point they have missed. This actually relates to the people of religion. Somebody is doing a business. Somebody is a doctor, physician, engineer. He is earning on account of what? His profession. He is dealing in something. He has a shop, grocery. He is earning on account of that shop. What are these people earning? On what account? What are they dealing with? Dealing in? They deal in religion. So if they have a vast wealth, that is a peculiar case. You can have, you require, you know, livelihood. But if you store money, if you amass wealth, while there is no source of income with you, except religion, then this is the worst thing. This, this actually relates to the Ahbar and Rohban. This ayah is one. So this actually, this you know, warning, stern warning relates to the Ahbar and Rohban, not to the general Muslims. This relates not to the common people, but to the people who say we are only serving deen. Well, why didn't, did you then make such a big property for you? He's going to your sons and daughters and they are fighting and quarreling. You know, throughout the history, except for the last 50 years or so, no Muslim alim or scholar had any royalty, any rights reserved of any of his books. If you are charging royalty, if you are earning on that account, well, it's okay. Till your life, you need something to, subsistence you need. But now that becomes a property to be inherited by the sons and the daughters. And they will quarrel about it. What will happen? And what is happening, everybody knows. So that's the point. You know how many books Varana Shokat Ali Thalmi Asaf Ali Thalmi he wrote no royalty anybody can publish whosoever likes publish and thank God this point came to my mind from the very beginning whatever I have written my cassettes audios I don't have any royalty no rights reserved Nothing of this sort. As you know, Hazrat Masih has been reported to have said in his sermon, when he was sending his disciples to go and preach the word of God, you got it free. You can wait free. I never charge anything from you. You will also not charge anything from anybody. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنَّ كَثِيرًا مِنَ الْأَحْبَارِ وَالرُّهْبَانِ لَا يَأْكُلُونَ أَمْوَالَ النَّاسِ بِالْبَاطِلِ وَيَصُدُّونَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ يَكْنِزُونَ الزَّهْبَ وَالْفِزَّةَ وَلَا يُنْفِقُونَهَا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَبَشِّرْهُمْ بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ يَوْمَ يُحْمَى and then with this, you know, red hot gold and red hot silver. Their foreheads and their sides and their backs will be branded. This is what you hoarded for yourselves. Now taste. Taste. 
just what you had gathered for yourself and hoarded for yourself. إن عدة الشهور إن الله إثنا عشرة إثنا عشرة شهرا في كتاب الله يوم خلق السماوات والأرض منها أربعة حرم. Now this is a general, you know, reformation because the customs in Arabia they had gone wrong. They had gone wrong. This calendar Allah سبحانه وتعالى is saying إن عدة الشهور إن الله إثنا عشرة شهرا في كتاب الله. With Allah and in the law of Allah, in the book of Allah, the number of months of a year is twelve. From the very day Yawma Khalaqa Samawati, Yawma Khalaqa Samawati will love. From the very beginning day when He created the heaven and the earth. This is the calendar. I wonder at some time, how come you know, the week has seven days everywhere. The year has twelve months everywhere. This universality, you know. So it is this, you know, calendar that has been fixed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. No difference in no civilization, in no culture, nowhere. Twelve months, seven days a week. Twelve months a year. إن عدة الشهور إن الله إثنا عشر شهرا في كتاب الله يوم خلق السماوات والأرض منها أربعة حرم out of these twelve four are holy or sacred months as you know as I told in the beginning one for Hajj al-Asghar or Umrah Rajab and three for the Hajj al-Akbar or Hajj that is Dhul Qada Dhul Hijja and Muharram ذلك الدين القيم فلا تظلموا فيهن أنفسكم. This is the right deen acknowledged by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, the straight deen. And do not wrong yourselves regarding them. وقاتل المشركين كافة كما يقاتلون كم كافة. And you fight against these mushrikeen, all of them. As they are fighting with you, all of them. No discrimination now. After this proclamation, all mushrikeen are to be, to be taken as one entity. Although there were three categories, you know, they have been discussed beforehand in the first six ayat. But essentially, they are one. Walamu an Allah al muttaqin and know it. Be it known to you that Allah is with. The God-fearing, those who have regard for Allah, who are conscious of Allah, every moment. In the one nasi was yada to fill kufr. Now this nasi was the invention of Quraysh, because they were the custodians of Kaaba. They thought they have the authority to change these months. This year, this month will be sacred. They completed the four. Number they remained intact, but they could change the calendar. This is nasi. In the man nasi is yada to fill kuf. This is an addition into disbelief. Yudallo bihi lazina kafaru, by which these peoples who have rejected the faith, who have gone astray, they have been led astray. Yuhillu na hu aman, wa yuharimu na aama. One year they declare it as halal, and the other year they declare it the same month to be haram. Le yuwati u idda ta maharram Allah, so that they complete the number of four months that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has decided. So they kept the law regarding the number, but they were changing the months. Zuyina nahum su amalihim. This evil deed of theirs has been made beautiful for them. They very much like, you know, the authority. We can say, we can declare it. We are the custodians of Kaaba. We can declare no this year instead of Rajab, it will be say Shaban will be the month for Umrah, and this will be Haram. No fighting, nothing of the sort in that month. They thought this is, you know, our prerogative, our authority. Wallahu la yahdil qawm al-kafirin. Allah is not going to guide such 
ungrateful people or those people who suppress the testimony of their souls within and reject the faith which has been presented to, you, to them by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is not going to guide them to the right path. Now what happened in the last Hajj, Hajjat al-Bada? All these discrepancies, you know, taken together, the calendar came to the original calendar on that tenth year of Hijrah calendar. The real, you know, now the month of Zuqada was really the month of Zuqada. And if your, hour, if your clock, you know, is going fast, one hour every day, after 24 days, the time will be absolutely okay. So this happened. But this was by the, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why in his khutbah, the sermon of the last hajj, the Prophet said, Istadara zamanu kahayatihi yawma khalaq Allahu samawati wal nawad. That all these, you know, mistakes and discrepancies taken together, but you know this calendar has taken a full round and it has come to the same correct position. The position on which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created on the first day when He created heavens and earth. Istadara zamanu kahayatihi yawma khalaq Allahu samawati wal nawad. With this ayah number 37, this discourse ends. Again remember, out of these 37 ayat, 18, from the 7th to 24th, they were revealed in the 8th year of Hijri calendar, before the victory of Makkah. But the first 6 ayat, and these 13 ayat, from 25th to 37th, they were revealed in the month of Zuqada, in the ninth year of the Hijri calendar, when the Hajj caravan had already left. And then you know because the first six were most important, and they were to be proclaimed, then Hazrat Ali was sent, radiyallahu ta'ala an, and he made that declaration on behalf of Muhammad, or actually this became, you know, a sign and symbol of the perfection of the Eid. Al yawma akbaltu lakum deenakum wa atbamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raghitu lakum al-islam adina. The accomplishment of the al-birsat al-khasa of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The special assignment that he had to fulfill himself stood accomplished, fulfilled. That is why I told you he took the testimony from the audience. Allah hal ballaghtu. And the reply was, in one voice, إِنَّا نَشْحَدُ وَنَّكَ كَبَّلْ لَغْتَ وَدَّيْتَ وَنَّسَحْتَ And there are more words also in one tradition. إِنَّا نَشْحَدُ أَنَّكَ عَدَّيْتَ لَمَانَتَ وَبَلَّغْتَ بِسَالَتَ وَنَسَحْتَ الْأُمَّتَ وَقَشَفْتَ الْغُمَّتَ They bear testimony. And then he said, فَلْيُبَلِّغِ شَاهِدُ الْغَائِبَ Now it's your duty. Duty of those who are present here, to convey to those who are not present here. That was the second aspect, which he had initiated already after the Treaty of Hudabiya, by sending his letters of invitation to Islam. And you know that has culminated in the Battle of Mota and the, the journey to Tabuk, and that will be discussed in the coming ayat, inshallah. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim, wa nafani wa yaakum bil ayat wa zikil hakim Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar The Islamic Organization of North America, Iona, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. 
a Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at t-a-n-z-e-e-m dot u-s or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.